spend enough time on the internet, and you'll start believing that comfort is bad. I myself have made plenty of videos that argue that you have to leave your comfort zone if you want to do anything worth doing or achieve anything worth achieving only. And while yes, this is true, I'm making this video because I don't want you to get the wrong message. So let's get one thing straight. Comfort isn't all bad. In fact, I would argue that sometimes it's even necessary because comfort is just an opportunity to recharge and recollect yourself. It's a place you can go to regain your edge and reignite the fire you need to keep pushing forward, which is necessary because without it, you'll inevitably face burnout. As I'm sure you've heard before, rest is just as productive as work. And that means that comfort has just as much a place in our lives as does pushing our boundaries and getting stuff done. The problem is when we stay in our comfort zone too long, because that's when we fall into sloth, and it's sloth that's harmful. Sloth is an indicator that complacency has started creeping in. It's giving fear, doubt, and laziness a chance to catch back up to you because you stopped being a moving target for too long. This is why you shouldn't stay comfortable, but I do believe that it's okay to go back to your comfort zone and rest whenever you feel you can no longer maintain the same pace as before. Given that you're willing to get back to leaving your comfort zone as soon as you feel you're able to, because anything in excess is bad. In life, everything is a balance, or at least there should be. Too much of one thing and that balance is thrown off. So instead of indulging in comfort when you could have and probably should have, you now have to work on restoring that balance before you can move forward. And this always ends up being more costly in time, energy, and money than taking the time to slow down when you can. I myself had to admit this just recently, since for a few weeks now, I've been feeling very dull and unmotivated. Luckily, I had a few scripts and videos on reserve, so I, this didn't impact my front end. But I found that each day I felt a little more resistance to working or doing anything productive that day. In response, I tried to force myself to work anyways, because you can't rely on motivation, you have to be disciplined, right? But this just made things worse, and eventually, despite having spent months building good habits and practices around YouTube, spirituality, cooking, cleaning, and working out, I got to the point where I just couldn't bother anymore. Even worse, I started feeling disconnected with myself. I could tell that I was blocked, but then no matter how much I tried to meditate on it, I couldn't figure out why. I could tell that my energy was drained, but despite exploring different possibilities, I couldn't identify a reason for it. And as the time passed, even my discipline started to wane. I procrastinated, I took way too long doing things, I distracted myself and lost focus often, I did busy work, nothing that actually mattered, I overslept, I started work late and ended early, I worked less days of the week. Basically, I used every trick in the book to not actually get stuff done. Until eventually, I couldn't ignore it anymore. I had to take a step back from YouTube before it was too late. So I did. I took a week off and it felt great. Towards the end of it, I even felt myself starting to want to write again, after weeks of not writing more than just a few words. And in fact, this script was written during that week. I also took time to just be in silence and reconnect with myself. I even allowed myself to skip my morning routine if I felt like it, because as Nathaniel Drew and Heinz say, as soon as you start feeling guilty for not doing or wanting to do your routine, you have to stop doing it. With this in mind, I allowed myself to stop feeling guilty for sleeping in and not working. Instead, I basked in it. I let it refuel me and fill me up. For a week, I let go of all expectations, and honestly, I think it was the best thing I could have done. If you've been with me from the start, then this story will sound familiar to you. And that's because this was basically a mini version of the almost two month long break I took a couple years back, which I also made a video on. In fact, it was my first video, so if you want an even deeper take on why taking breaks in order to recharge is so important, then I really recommend you watch that video. And once you do, or even if you don't, I encourage you to ask yourself if you're working because you feel like you can't stop, because you want to avoid the guilt you would feel if you did, or because you're really enjoying it. I'll leave it up to you to decide what course of action is best depending on your answer, but I will say that, like with me, taking a break could be all that's keeping you from having that next great idea or regaining the drive to keep chasing your dreams. A 
If you like this video, then you might also like the video that I'll link in the end card. In it, I delve a little deeper into the fine balance between staying in and leaving your comfort zone. As for Analo, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.